Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this AZ500 Azure Security Engineer Certification course. We just finished an episode related to host security. In this video, we're going to learn about container security. Let's have a high level look at the things what we are going to learn in this video. We will start with what are containers and how it works. And then we will learn about what is ACI, which is Azure Container Instances. Then we will learn about AKS, which is Azure Kubernetes Services. What are AKS terminologies and what are the architecture it based on? Then we will learn about networking storage and how AKS and Active Directory work together. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So what are containers? A container is an isolated, lightweight silo for running an application on the host operating system. Containers built on top of the host operating system's kernel and contain only apps and some lightweight operating system APIs and services that run in user mode. While a container share a host operating system's kernel, but the container doesn't get access to it. Instead, the container gets an isolated and in some cases, virtualized view of the system. For example, a container can access a virtualized version of the file system and registry, but any changes affect only the container and are discarded when it stops. To save data, the container can mount persistent storage such as Azure Disk or File Share, including Azure Files. You need Docker in order to work with Windows Container. Docker consists of Docker Engine and Docker Client. So what are the features of containers? The first feature is isolation. Typically provides lightweight isolation from the host and other containers but doesn't provide as strong a security boundary as a VM. Second feature is operating system. Containers runs the user mode portion of an operating system and can be tailored to contain just the needed service for your app using fewer system resources. The next one is deployment. You can deploy individual containers by using Docker via command line and you can deploy multiple containers by using an orchestrator such as Azure Kubernetes Service. And the next one is persistent storage. You can use Azure Disk for local storage for a single node or Azure Files, which is an SMB shares for storage shared by multiple nodes or servers. And containers are fault tolerant. If a cluster node fails, any containers running on it are rapidly recreated by the orchestrator on another cluster node. Let's talk about ACI security. Containers are built from images that are stored in one or more repositories. These repositories can belong to a public registry like Docker Hub or to a private registry. You can monitor and scan container images continuously. You can take advantage of solution to scan container images in a private registry and identify potential vulnerabilities. It's important to understand the depth of threat detection that the different solutions provide. And you can use the vulnerability management as part of your container development lifecycle. By using effective vulnerability management throughout the container development lifecycle, you improve the odds that you identify and resolve security concerns before they become a more serious problem. New vulnerabilities are discovered all the time. So scanning for and identifying vulnerabilities is a continuous process. Let's learn about what is Azure Container Instances or ACI. Azure Container Instances is a PaaS service for scenario that can operate in isolated containers, including simple applications, task automation, and build jobs. For scenarios where you need full container orchestration, including service discovery across multiple containers, automatic scaling, and coordinated application upgrades. Microsoft recommends Azure Kubernetes Service. So what are the features of Azure Container Instances? Let's go through one by one. First one is fast startup times. Containers offer significant startup benefits over virtual machines. And Azure Container Instances can start containers in Azure in seconds without the need to provision and manage VMs. The second feature is 
container access azure container instances enable exposing your container groups directly to the internet with an ip address and fully qualified domain name and azure container instances also support executing a command in a running container by providing an interactive shell to help with application development and troubleshooting the other feature is container deployment you can deploy containers from docker hub or azure container registry next feature is hypervisor level security historically containers have offered application dependency isolation and resource governance but have not been considered sufficiently hardened for hostile multi tenant usage azure container instances guarantees your application is as isolated in a container as it would be in a vm another feature is custom sizes azure container instances provide optimum utilization by allowing exact specification of cpu cores and memory another feature is you get persistent storage so to retrieve and persist state with azure container instances microsoft offer direct mounting of azure file shares backed by azure storage another great feature is you get flexible billing which supports per gb or per cpu or per second billing so you can basically choose which one you want another great feature is it supports linux and windows containers you get co scheduled groups and virtual network deployment as well we mentioned about azure container registry or acr a couple of times so what is a registry a container registry is a service that stores and distributes container images docker hub is a public container registry that supports the open source community and serves as a general catalog of images azure container registry provides users with direct control of their images with integrated authentication geo replication supporting global distribution and reliability for network closed deployments in addition to docker container images azure container registry supports related content artifacts including open container initiative or oci image formats let's understand security and access you log into registry using azure cli or standard docker login command security features of the premium sku include content trust for image tag signing and firewalls and virtual network to restrict access to the registry azure security center optionally integrates with azure container registry to scan images whenever an image is pushed to a registry what about the repository container registries manage repositories collection of container images or other artifacts with the same name but different tags and finally how can you monitor container activity and user access you can use log analytics log analytics can help you view and manage your docker and windows container host in a single location Let's understand the Azure Container Registry authentication. There are several ways to authenticate with Azure Container Registry, each of which is applicable to one or more registry usage scenarios. These recommended ways include authenticating to a registry directly via individual login or your application, and container orchestrators can perform unattended or headless authentication by using Azure Active Directory service principle. This following table list the available authentication methods and recommended scenarios now what is azure kubernetes service azure kubernetes service is a managed kubernetes offering that further simplifies container based application deployment and management kubernetes is a rapidly evolving platform that manages container based application and their associated networking and storage components the focus is on application workloads not the underlying infrastructure components kubernetes provides a declarative approach to deployments backed by a robust set of apis for management operations you can build and run modern portable microservices based application that benefit from kubernetes orchestrating and managing the availability of those application components kubernetes support both stateless and stateful application as teams progress through the adoption of microservices based applications azure kubernetes service or aks provide a managed kubernetes service that reduces the complexity of deployment and core management task 
including coordinating upgrades. The AKS control pane is managed by the Azure platform and you only pay for the AKS node that runs your applications. AKS is built on top of the open source Azure Kubernetes service engine, which is AKS engine. So what are the features of Azure Kubernetes services? AKS is fully managed and you can use public IP and FQDN and it can be accessed with RBAC or Azure AD. You can dynamically scale containers and you can run automation for rolling updates and rollbacks of containers as well. Let's look at AKS architecture. When you create an AKS cluster, a cluster master is automatically created and configured. This cluster master is provided as a managed Azure resource abstracted from the user. There is no cost for the cluster master, only the nodes that are part of the AKS cluster. The cluster master includes some of the following core Kubernetes components. The first one is Kub API server. The API server is how the underlying Kubernetes APIs are exposed. These components provide the integration of management tools such as Kubelet or Kubernetes dashboard. Then we have etcd. To maintain state of your Kubernetes cluster and configuration, the highly available etcd is a key value store within Kubernetes. The next one is Kube scheduler. When you create or scale application, the scheduler determines what nodes can run the workload and starts them. The last one is Kube Controller Manager. The controller manager oversees a number of smaller controllers that perform actions such as replicating pods and handling nodes operations. Let's learn some of the AKS terminologies as well. So what are pools? Pools are a group of nodes with identical configuration. And nodes are individual virtual machines running containerized applications. And ports are single instance of an application. And a port can contain multiple containers as well. Deployment means one or more identical ports managed by Kubernetes. And finally, manifest means YAML file describing a deployment. In AKS, cluster master nodes provide the core Kubernetes service and orchestration for application workloads. In AKS, the Kubernetes master components are part of the managed service provided by Microsoft. Each AKS cluster has its own single tenanted, dedicated Kubernetes master to provide the API server, scheduler, etc. This master is managed and maintained by Microsoft. Let's look at how AKS networking looks like. To simplify the network configuration for application workloads, Kubernetes uses services to logically group a set of ports together and provide network connectivity. It includes cluster IP, which creates an internal IP address for use within the AKS cluster and good for internal only application that supports that support other workloads within the cluster. Then we have node port, which creates a port mapping on the underlying node that allows the application to be accessed directly with the node IP address and port. Then we have the load balancer, which creates an Azure load balancer resource, configures an external IP address, and connects the requested ports to the load balancer backend pool. The last one is external name. This creates a specific DNS entry for easier application access. Now let's learn about AKS storage. Applications that run in Azure Kubernetes service may need to store and retrieve data. For some application workloads, this data storage can use local fast storage on the node that is no longer needed. For some application workload, this storage can be local. Fast storage on the node that is no longer needed when the ports are, when the ports are deleted. Other application workloads may require storage that persists on more regular data volume within the Azure platform. You can manually create these data volumes to be assigned to, broad, to ports directly or have Kubernetes automatically create them. There are two types of data volumes you can create. One is Azure Disk and Azure Files. Azure Disk can be used to create Kubernetes data disk resource and Azure Files can be used to mount an SMB 3.0 share backed by Azure Storage Account to ports. 
Now let's understand how AKS can be integrated with Azure Active Directory. With Azure Active Directory integrated AKS clusters, you can grant users or groups access to Kubernetes resources within a namespace or across the cluster. This approach provides a single source for user account management and password credentials. The user can only access the resources as defined by the cluster administrator. So, so that concludes episode 11, which was all about container security. In the next video, we're going to do a knowledge check on all the episodes, what we have completed under module 2. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.